Well, I hate to tell you I told you so, but I told you so. So if you're familiar with the channel, I've been criticizing Aaron Smith Levin, who runs the Growing Up in Scientology channel, for uh, basically misleading a lot of people in a lot of his videos. Again, Aaron does put out a few good videos. I can't say the Linkin Park videos have been that good. They just are him doing speculative nonsense and him trying to over-impress people that, Guy, I know a lot of friends who used to be a Scientology. I'm Aaron. I, I, just, I, I just know a lot of people. I'm a gatekeeper. And doing that kind of spiel. Now, if you're not familiar with the Scientology, anti-Scientology controversy, you'll be a little puzzled about what is the big deal. Listen, there are some Lincoln Park fans who do not care about this controversy. They don't care about Scientology. They just listen to the music and saying, the music is good, Lincoln Park is back. I just don't care about this larger controversy. And I am sympathetic because, again, a lot of anti-Scientology people are not really anti-Scientology. They're just pretending to do anti-Scientology for the money or for the fame or for the glory. But anti-Scientology is not really what they're up to. So they're trying to scandalize people about Emily just feels very false and phony, and Aaron is really one of them. And boy, his latest salvo is just embarrassingly, I don't want to say just grifter, I mean, it is sort of borderline abusive, where he's trying to pressure or gaslight Emily into contacting him and joining his channel, because, you know, if he doesn't do that, she's going to be condemned to hell. And even worse, she's not going to be part of this new Hollywood documentary that may be coming to us, but it's a bad documentary because Aaron is not involved. Is that Alex Gibney and Leah Ramini are shopping or have sold a documentary to be made about Danny Masterson and the trial. And that none of Danny Masterson's victims are attached to the project. Oh, cold blooded. <laughs> Good luck delivering that documentary. Why I'm even mentioning that is because this whole viral thing that's what well, with aaron unfortunately you have to double check what the hell he says and as of yet there is no announcement no news no traction on this alleged documentary that will happen so alex is a very good documentary filmmaker i admire a lot of his stuff however he is capable of making some mistakes i think dark side was a very very good film but again, his films do have mm, issues. Even Going Clear, which I think is an excellent documentary in many ways, does make many mistakes. It's very good if you just don't know anything about Scientology and want to get at least the basics, but if you want a really detailed, accurate summation of Scientology, that is not it. So he is a good filmmaker, but flawed. That's it. I have no clue what the hell Aaron is talking about. So he's saying preemptively, because again... And he's being rhetorical. He doesn't, quote, represent all the Jane Doe's. There are many victims of Danny Masterson, but a few of them have hitched their ride to Aaron, and Aaron's more than happy to do propaganda for them because they will do propaganda for him. So some people may be very puzzled and confused what the hell is happening, so I'm going to keep it very brief and very short. I'll just give one example. Bixler, out of nowhere, decides to condemn DOA, this very shaky and shady activist, for a while who was loyal to Aaron, but they had a falling out, and now Aaron does not like DOA. DOA is dead to him. DOA is evil. DOA is abusive. That may be all true, but that's not the reason Aaron hates him. Aaron hates him because DOA is raising legitimate questions about Aaron and his abuses and his scandals. But Bixler decided to take a position against DOA saying, don't trust DOA, he's evil, I don't believe him, he's not really a whistleblower. And you're like, well, that same charge can be leveled against her. She's not much of a whistleblower. She's just has her own agenda to pursue. But Aaron enjoys pumping her up because, again, they share an agenda together. So it's all very cynical. It's all very sad and silly. And whether Alex really is even doing the documentary, we don't know. But let's say he's going to do it. And let's say he's not going to contact Bixler. Does that make it a bad documentary? Well, if it's focused on Danny Masterson and Scientology, not necessarily. Does Aaron not understand how film operates? Stories can be told from many different angles, and I looked this up. Alex is not into objectivity. He doesn't care about objectivity, so he's not necessarily going to approach the subject with trying to provide a basic facts kind of timeline with Danny Masterson, the trial, or Scientology. He's going to do what he would want to do with the subject matter. What is he even going to do with Danny Masterson? We just don't even know. Now, despite my issues with Bixler, I do think it would be nice to consult her, right, being generous. But again, she is pursuing her own agenda. And guess what? Alex may not care about that. He may not care about Aaron and DOA falling out. He may not care about Bixler pursuing her Hollywood agenda. He may be focused, for all we know, on the early history of Scientology and how Danny related to it, and how people like Danny, the celebrities, get entrapped in Scientology 
and are used by the church, and then they use the church themselves, right? There's so many different angles to Scientology in the Danny Masterson story. Why is it a default? Well, if you don't have the Jane Doe, well, what are you going to do? I don't know, Aaron. You can do stories many, many different ways. I mean, I just saw Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and they managed to tackle a story from an angle I did not predict. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Even when I was spoiled for a few plot elements, I'm like, oh, they took the story in a very different direction than I expected. Not necessarily great, but it's like, oh, that was a very uh, interesting angle that they took. So what, as they say, is the real problem Aaron has with this? Well, I think we all know who the real problem is, according to Aaron, and it is his former colleagues in the Aftermath TV show where he was featured, but now he feels that they betrayed him, so he's feeling very, very alienated, very hurt, he wants revenge, he wants to destroy them, but guess what? They don't seem to care. They're just ignoring him, and they're moving on. It's like, fine, we don't want to be friends, fine, You do your own thing, we're going to do our own thing. Again, I'm not on anybody's side here. You can definitely ask a lot of questions about the Aftermath TV show, ask a lot of questions about Mike Rinder, ask a lot of questions about Aaron and his former friends. However, what does this have to do with fighting Scientology? I don't know. I I don't know, and he doesn't articulate himself very well. And you guys know, documentary makers, what are they interested in? They want as many eyeballs as possible. They want drama. They want, uh, you know, whatever the equivalent is to clicks and views. And, um, and and by the way, one of the reasons I'm mentioning this is because there really is no single person who knows how to get in touch with all of the Jane Doe's other than perhaps some people at the district attorney's office. And I'm not sure the district attorney's office would cooperate with a request to try to put a production company in touch with um, as many of the Jane Doe's as possible. So if you are one of Danny Masterson's victims and you would like to be directly informed of the production companies that are interested in doing this so that you can make a decision for yourself. Well, let's be super generous that some production companies have reached out to Aaron. I find that highly doubtful given his own scandals, and one of them features him, and this is caught on camera, taking a woman and throwing her against a wall. Yes, that actually happened. So the idea that he is in a position to moralize or dictate to Hollywood... Or any producer. Now, here's the thing. I'm the hero. Jane Doe's also hero. Here's the new documentary idea. Okay? Now, listen. Partisan documentaries are a thing. And I will be consistent. And I don't always like his work. But Michael Moore has made a very good living. He's very, very rich. He's not super rich. But he's very wealthy. Making very partisan documentaries. I think it's a very mixed bag. I do like a lot of his work. But some of his work is... It's propaganda. It is. He's full on lying to you. He is distorting things. It is very, very deceptive. However, does it work? Good or bad? Yes, it does work. And good or bad? I do think where it matters, he keeps it mainly factual. Like Fahrenheit 9-11, I have a lot of question marks about that film, but it turns out it's actually very accurate. That's the dilemma with Michael Moore. You can't always trust his work, but when the work is very well done, it is very well done. It does make its point. And yes, good or bad, he does help in reform movement. So, you know, again, it's going to be a mixed bag. I would prefer Alex's work because it's more slow. Action will not happen immediately, but it's more rock solid right now. He is also very partisan. He frames things in a not deceptive way, but it's very partial, very partisan. So if Aaron wants to enter the ring, by all means, but I still don't understand his point. I guess the point is... He should have a monopoly because he's an ex-Scientologist. You see, kids, in the SBTV world, if you're ex-Scientologies and you're doing some witness work and now proclaiming, often without any evidence, that I used to be abused, I used to be a victim of Scientology, therefore believe everything I say, okay? If you don't spot right away the logical fallacy in the attempt to put you in a cult, you're an idiot. Now, do some of these ex-Scientologists have very riveting stories and even true stories? Sure, but not all of them are with SPTV or uh, Aaron's very weird, loose propaganda network. Again, some of these people are of good faith, but that's a very small minority. A lot of them are what they are. They're just hustlers, and they're trying to hustle you with a very shaky, sad story about their upbringing. Even the very wealthy Scientologists are like, It was so sad. I lost my ranch. And I'm like, You had a ranch? What are you complaining about? And Aaron is probably one of the worst cases in the world because you're like, what exactly did he suffer in Scientology or from Scientology? And it's the infamous disconnection problem. Although the more you read about uh, Aaron's uh, background, 
the fact that many people want to disconnect from him, they should be disconnecting from him for many reasons. He's just a very abusive, ugly person. So it's like, okay. Like, I may not be able to see this nephew, that cousin. Okay, Aaron, why is that a problem? I don't know. I don't know. And there's a lot of tragedy to Aaron's life. However, the problem is, we don't know if he's the author of the tragedy or he really did suffer. And he just does this thing on his channel and it is way too much. Again, maybe he's honestly suffering. He definitely does have mental problems. Uh, and again, that's an opinion. It's on YouTube. That's just my opinion of him. I don't do professional therapy, but he just does this thing a lot that he does is uh, what I consider fake crying. He just gets into these bouts of just over performatively crying and say, I remember and so I told you this happened and uh, guys, I was just, I was. it is way overdone. It is way overdone. And if you study these things seriously, real victims rarely act like that. Real victims, when they have to recall trauma, it's very hard for them. They can barely speak. It's very hard for them. But Aaron just has a tendency to get very performative. And when you figure out what the abuse is, you're like, uh, I'm sure we could call that abuse, but you know, like, why, why is that an issue? I mean, these are serious things, losing income, losing a job, but I don't think most people consider, oh, I'm having issues with my income. That's a traumatic event, like, right, being abused as a child. Those are different categories of abuse, but Aaron just mushes it all together when it's convenient for him, but when it's also convenient for him, he separates things radically and says, guys, it's just terrible with Lincoln Park and Emily. She's supporting people who are guilty and you're like no she's not there is no evidence that emily is what defending a chomo there is zero evidence of that but he just puts out a video saying the friends of em those are not her friends you provided zero evidence they are her friends i think in only one case can you say maybe that's her friend maybe that's a connection to her he just puts out these videos saying the friends of emily are doing you provide zero evidence they're doing this to the Jane Doe gentleman. You provided zero evidence for this. But he will just do it. He'll just put out these propaganda videos and say, Guys, Lincoln Park deserves all the backlash. They, they are evil. I will hold them to account. Uh, Aaron, you can try to do that. But like Michael Moore, it is perfectly legit to push back and say, Well, Michael, you, know, you make some good points here and there. But it does seem in this part of the documentary, it's all filled with lies. And listen, Michael Moore... Listen, Michael's a grown man, so he has defended himself, he has provided answers, and I'll be really honest, some of the answers are convincing, but some of the answers are like, really? 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 So again, I still admire Michael, I admire a lot of his work, but there's no doubt about it, he is a propagandist in at least part of these films. There's no doubt about that. And if Aaron wants to continue down that road, that is him. I'm just asking, what is the value of this propaganda? And so far, the value of it is uh, very, very small, in my humble opinion.